I think I found out how water's getting in my front diff. Okay, let's get in for a close look. It's up above the tire, right behind the shock mount. And here's the vent for the front diff. Right in here. Yeah, you can see the line goes down and makes a curve right here. So I thought it might have some kind of a check valve in it that would let air in, but maybe the engineers might be smart enough to keep water from getting down into it. So I wanted to do a straight shot and just see if it is open. This is a 50 thousandths inch hex wrench. And it will go clear down to the curve. It just lacks about a quarter inch of going to the to the curve in the hex wrench. So we'll pull it up and put our thumb there. It's a long one. And you can see that it did in fact go clear down to the bend in the hose. I'm going to reroute this. This vent will just unclip and there's plenty of better places to mount it. This is a 2017 Ram 2500 Cummins. Now this is where mine's located. Yours may be different, but I did a Google search on water and front diff on the fourth generation of Rams and I found several complaints and some of them were really bad. Okay, this truck is a 2017 with 13,700 miles on it and it's four years old next month and the front diff has never been serviced. Also, I want to add this truck has never been off-road and I've never ever put it in four-wheel drive and drove for any length of time. I try to put it in four-wheel drive and drive two to three miles about every three to four months, but sometimes time gets away from me and I forget to do it. A few times a year at least, you need to get that differential fluid slung all over that differential, get the ring and pinion spinning, get the spider gear spinning, splash that fluid around on all the bearings. I think I'm doing it enough, but I don't think I am. Here recently I've been writing it down, you can see here, 329.20. The next one wasn't until 922, there's six months, and I just did it May 1st. There's five, six, seven, eight, there's eight months. So I'm clearly not doing it enough. Now because of low miles and not hardly ever engaging the front wheel drive or the four wheel drive, I went this long and did not do the flood change. I wish I'd have done it now about two years ago. I just never thought Ram would put that vent up there where all the water can really splash into it. But I didn't film how much water was in it. There really wasn't that much. There were several, several spoonfuls. And of course it gets in the bottom and it created a sludge and a white, uh, a white residue and it was a pretty ugly looking sludge the rest of it of course looked okay and the water being heavier than oil it, it it goes to the bottom and the other disappointment was is the inside of my pan had some serious rust on it about this high probably all along in here and i went ahead and scrubbed it up really good with some sandpaper and cleaned it off but this area here had some had quite a bit of rust in it and probably ran about from here over to here you can just about almost see the water line on it so that's unfortunate the rear even at 13.7, I've changed the rear probably three times, and it's got zero water in it. But we'll go take a look at the vent, and I'll show you where the vent's located on the rear diff. Okay, we're back to the rear diff. On my truck, the 2017, it's coming off on the left side. Here's the vent hose here. I can feel it. Wraps around, and it's clamped right on top. It's clamped right on top of the axle tube, right on top of this one. Just on the top side. The vent runs up here. And they do a pretty good job of hiding this one from getting any kind of water in it through driving through heavy rain. Got the spare tar right here. And let me push on this. There's your vent right there. This lays up there really nice and hidden. It lays horizontal, not straight up and down like that front one. See, that's the thing about that front one. It just lays straight up and down where any water's got nowhere to go but straight down into the tube. This is another view of the vent tube. The ram did this just for protection, just to put the little sheath on there to protect it from wearing but i don't know if you can see that but it goes right down and clamps on top of the the tube there you go okay we're back up on the front i'll take you in there and show you a look at what the vent looks like and keep in mind here's where it was even being inverted like that would be a lot better if they would do if i could just clip it there but i'm going to see what it looks like underneath that was straight vertical right where the water could run right straight down into it and then right in this wheel well you can imagine how much water's slinging up here driving through heavy rain and, and puddles okay there's your vent right here you just have to make daggone sure you don't get around the drivetrain it's got a clip Got a clip right here to hold it. 
Don't want to jeopardize that. Okay, I pulled it loose. Okay, here's the vent. You can see it's a pretty good size hole in there. Heck, that's about an eighth inch hole. There's the clip that was on it. I think what I might do is just leave it like this. There's a hole in the frame. Okay, well you see the vent and you see what my chore is going to be. I'm just going to get it attached down here somewhere where it's out of all the rain. And, and I'm going to make sure the vent is either horizontal. It really doesn't matter. I want it any position, either upside down or horizontal, because now we're going up a pretty good hill to get to the vent. And again, when you do it, make sure your vent is clearing the, the front drive shaft. Okay, if you remember, there's a hole in the frame here. So what we did, we left the original clip in place on the vent. You can see the daylight, I got a hole right here in the frame. And you'll have to struggle just a little bit because the frame is wider than the clip. That makes for a good tight fit. It's got a really good snap to it when it did go on. So I have it upside down now, that's why I wanted it. And then just, I worried about it if it ever did work its way out. I don't want it flopping around, so I put a zip tie through the frame. The hole goes clear through the frame, it went around the upper side. And I think that's a 15 or 18 inch zip tie. You can see there where it's holding it. Just, just for redundancy's sake, we will cut the zip tie. Okay, now we're back on the outside. I'm gonna cut the zip tie on the inside of the skirting. Okay, well that all to sum it up. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. And I thank you for watching, and have a good one.